so was he a deist, like Voltaire and Diderot, or a pantheist, like Spinoza, whose philosophy he admired. I believe in Spinoza's God, who reveals himself in the orderly harmony of what exists, not in a God who concerns himself with fates and actions of human beings. I don't try to imagine a personal God. It suffices to stand in awe at the structure of the world, insofar as it allows our inadequate senses to appreciate it. Albert Einstein. A quasi-mystical response to nature and the universe is common among scientists and rationalists. It has no connection with supernatural belief. Great scientists of our time who sound religious usually turn out not to be so when you examine their beliefs more deeply. One of Einstein's most eagerly quoted remarks is, Science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. But Einstein also said, It was, of course, a lie what you read about my religious convictions, a lie which is being systematically repeated. I do not believe in a personal God, and I have never denied this, but have expressed it clearly. If something is in me which can be called religious, then it is the unbounded admiration for the structure of the world, so far as our science can reveal it. Does it seem that Einstein contradicted himself? That his words can be cherry-picked for quotes to support both sides of an argument? No. By religion, Einstein meant something entirely different from what is conventionally meant. Here are two more quotations from Einstein to give a flavor of Einsteinian religion. I am a deeply religious non-believer. This is a somewhat new kind of religion. The idea of a personal God is quite alien to me and seems even naive. In greater numbers since his death, religious apologists understandably try to claim Einstein as one of their own. Some of his religious contemporaries saw him very differently. In 1940, Einstein wrote a famous paper justifying his statement, I do not believe in a personal God. This and similar statements provoked a storm of letters from the religiously orthodox. The Roman Catholic Bishop of Kansas City said, It is sad to see a man who comes from the race of the Old Testament and its teaching deny the great tradition of that race. Other Catholic clergymen chimed in. There is no other God but a personal God. Einstein does not know what he's talking about. He's all wrong. Some men think that because they have achieved a high degree of learning in some field, they're qualified to express opinions in all. Both he and the bishop thought that Einstein, being theologically untrained, had misunderstood the nature of God. On the contrary, Einstein understood very well exactly what he was denying. An American Roman Catholic lawyer, working on behalf of an ecumenical coalition, wrote to Einstein, We deeply regret that you made your statement in which you ridicule the idea of a personal God. In the past ten years, nothing has been so calculated to make people think that Hitler had some reason to expel the Jews from Germany as your statement. Conceding your right to free speech, I still say that your statement constitutes you as one of the greatest sources of discord in America. A New York rabbi said, Einstein is unquestionably a great scientist, but his religious views are diametrically opposed to Judaism. The president of a historical society in New Jersey wrote a letter that so damningly exposes the weakness of the religious mind. We respect your learning, Dr. Einstein, but there is one thing you do not seem to have learned, that God is a spirit and cannot be found through the telescope or microscope. No more than human thought or emotion can be found by analyzing the brain. As everyone knows, religion is based on faith, not knowledge. Every thinking person, perhaps, is assailed at times with religious doubt. My own faith has wavered many a time, but I never told anyone of my spiritual aberrations for two reasons. One, I feared that I might, by mere suggestion, disturb and damage the life and hopes of some fellow being. Two, because I agree with the writer who said, there is a mean streak in anyone who will destroy another's faith. I hope, Dr. Einstein, that you were misquoted and that you will yet say something more pleasing to the vast number of the American people who delight to do you honor. What a devastatingly revealing letter. Every sentence drips with intellectual and moral cowardice. The one thing all his theistic critics got right was that Einstein was not one of them. He was repeatedly indignant at the suggestion that he was a theist. There is every reason to think that famous Einsteinisms like God is subtle, but he is not malicious, or he does not play dice, or 
did God have a choice in creating the universe, are pantheistic, not deistic, and certainly not theistic. God does not play dice, should be translated as, randomness does not lie at the heart of all things. Did God have a choice in creating the universe, means, could the universe have begun in any other way? Einstein was using God in a purely metaphorical, poetic sense. So is Stephen Hawking, and so are most of those physicists who occasionally slip into the language of religious metaphor. The metaphorical or pantheistic god of the physicists is light years away from the interventionist, miracle-reeking, thought-reading, sin-punishing, prayer-answering god of the Bible, of priests, mullahs and rabbis, and of ordinary language. Deliberately to confuse the two is, in my opinion, an act of intellectual high treason. Much unfortunate confusion is caused by failure to distinguish what can be called Einsteinian religion from supernatural religion. Einstein sometimes invoked the name of God, and he's not the only atheistic scientist to do so, inviting misunderstanding by supernaturalists eager to misunderstand and claim so illustrious a thinker as their own. The dramatic, or was it mischievous, ending of Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time, for then we should know the mind of God, is notoriously misconstrued. It has led people to believe, mistakenly of course, that Hawking is a religious man. Carl Sagan in Pale Blue Dot wrote, How is it that hardly any major religion has looked at science and concluded, This is better than we thought. The universe is much bigger than our prophets said. Grander, more subtle, more elegant. Instead they say, No, 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 my God is a little God and I want him to stay that way. A religion, old or new, that stressed the magnificence of the universe as revealed by modern science, might be able to draw forth reserves of reverence and awe, hardly tapped by the conventional faiths. I hear myself often described as a deeply religious man. An American student wrote to me that she had asked her professor whether he had a view about me. Sure, he replied. He's positive. Science is incompatible with religion. But he waxes ecstatic about nature and the universe. To me, that is religion. But is religion the right word? I don't think so. 